Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For more information, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson. What's going on guys? I am off to Patagonia and I'm so excited. I'm so excited because, <laughs> I don't know why my voice went like that, because Patagonia was the first trip I had to cancel uh, at the start of the pandemic. March, we were in Morocco. It started April, it was supposed to be Patagonia. But because of restrictions, I haven't still been able to get back to Patagonia. So this is three years in the making. And I'm so excited, so excited <laughs> for those reasons. But also because for the first time since the pandemic, I bought camera gear, a little bit of camera gear out of necessity because some of my old gear was getting a little bit too broken down, and a little bit too old. But I think the gear I bought was sensible and exciting. Let me show you. And in Patagonia, I'm going to review both of these lenses. But today's episode is going to be focused on one. So let me show you both, first of all. The first one, I'm so excited about this lens. This is an RF 14 to 35 millimeter f4 with image stabilization. That's an awesome wide angle lens, I think. So once we get to Patagonia some, and some landscapes, we'll review that bad boy. And then I got this little dude. This is an RF 16 millimeter f2.8 STM lens. And I think this lens went way under the radar at Canon. And I think it's extremely functional as a lens, or it's going to be. So let's open this up and let me show you what I mean. Uh, it's a 16 millimeter prime, it's f2.8, so it's wide and fast. Maybe not fast enough for some people that want to do really good astrophotography, but I think it can definitely be used for astrophotography at f2.8. But for me, its main purpose is going to be as a vlogging lens. So look at how tiny this thing is. That's, um, the lens cap is like this little dude. And then you've got, yeah, it's almost, almost, almost a pancake. It's so small. And at f2.8, at 16 millimeters, I think it's going to be the perfect uh, vlogging lens. It's going to make my vlogging setup really small. So uh, let's put it on the camera, actually. This is my old vlogging setup. Uh, the RP with the 17 to 40 millimeter. You can see it kind of looks like that. I don't know where the camera's showing. That, when you're vlogging, it's not bad. It's fairly light, but it's a little bit bulky. Let's swap on the 16 mil prime. And look at the difference. How small and light that is. And that's small in a good way. You can grip it like this. You can grip it with the L bracket. And that's just gonna be absolutely awesome. I'm, uh, as I mentioned, heading to Patagonia right away. So let's just use this setup the whole way down there. I'll talk about it. I'll test it and maybe we'll even take some pictures once we get down to Patagonia. So let's hit the road and then the air. It's uh, 4.20 in the morning and uh, I'm off to Lisbon Airport. Let's go to Patagonia. One thing I want to note about this lens from the jump is that there's no image stabilization. And in post, I haven't stabilized any of the clips in today's vlog because I want to show you how it handles. In fact, as I'm using the Canon RP as the body, there's not even real in-body stabilization either. Still, I think it does pretty well. Okay, I made it to the airport and I am exhausted. <laughs> and it's uh, probably not the best thing to be exhausted because I've got about 28 hours of travel ahead. It's six in the morning. I don't get in until two in the morning in Chile. So lots of hours to come. Let's get moving. Having this tiny vlogging setup has made me much more willing to vlog. The clunky setup I had before meant that I often was just not willing to carry it with me everywhere. I don't feel that anymore. Made it to Sao Paulo. I uh, did sleep quite a bit on the plane actually and now somehow managed to make a 30 minute uh, exchange, whatever you call that, layover, a 30 minute layover. Latam staff met me at the gate and brought me here. Awesome service, shout out. Second flight of the day, two to go. Thank you. 
So with my camera in hand, I boarded my flight to Santiago and we crossed over the Andes right at sunset. It was legendary. And finally, I made it to Punta Arenas. I'm in my hotel. It is three in the morning, so I should probably be quiet. <laughs> it's three in the morning. I left home in Portugal at, what can't remember, maybe four o'clock in the morning, plus time differences. So it's like, I don't know, 28, 30 hours worth of travel. And I'm bad. I'm beat. <laughs> but I did get some sleep on all the flights, so I'll be ready to attack the world again tomorrow. Oh, if my luggage arrives, my luggage didn't make that quick connection in Sao Paulo. So I have no luggage, I kind of stink. But we'll deal with that problem tomorrow. Right now, I need sleep. Okay, it's like, uh, I don't know, 36 hours after the last time I checked in, my bag finally arrived. It didn't arrive until like mid midnight, essentially, which is 24 hours after I arrived in Punta Arenas. So I was in the same clothes for like 50 hours <laughs> between the travel. Yeah, anyway, I, I was stinky. But all's well that ends well. It is uh, now time to go. I'm all packed up again and uh, heading north to Puerto Natales. Let's hit the road and maybe make some photos on this video. I can't tell you how awesome it is to be back in Patagonia. It feels like coming home after a long time away. Lots has changed, but what hasn't changed is the fact that the weather is ever changing. And right now, it's a little bit miserable outside. So we made it to Punta Arenas. The drive here was windy and rainy and I didn't film any of it because it was a little bit wild, but we're here. How are you guys liking the footage so far off the 16 millimeter F2.8? All of the video clips so far have been done with this lens. I can't see it. I don't know how it's behaving, how it's handling. Well, I guess I'll see later. What are you guys thinking? Uh, I bought this lens primarily as a video lens rather than a photo lens, although I think it has its purposes as well for things like astrophotography and street photography. So I will be using it for photos as well. But right now, <laughs> I think we're going to try to head down to the waterfront and see if we can make some photos, you know, if we don't get uh, blown away by this wind. We've come down to the old Broken Pier, which is one of my favorite spots to photograph. And I'm going to try to take a couple pictures with the 16 millimeter F2.8, but there's a couple things. One, it's an STM lens, which means that you're not supposed to put a filter holder or filters on them. They're just not meant for that. I don't know if it's that they're not strong enough, but that's not what they're there for. So I've got to do this without filters. And second of all, the light's just not great. So more than anything, I'm curious about how sharp this thing is. So I'm going to throw it on my tripod, take a couple test images, and then maybe we'll bring them back to the computer and have a look at the files. Before I share the images from the 16 millimeter F2.8 with you, let me tell you quickly about today's sponsor. Squarespace is an amazing place for photographers and bloggers to build a really professional looking website really quickly and easily. It has a lot of templates that make it simple to get started. You have great resources too, like members only areas, easy to build stores for selling arts and even services. Of course, there's also lots of other great tools for creators such as a logo maker and in-depth analytics. So if you're looking for a photography website or portfolio, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Link in the description. Okay, I am back in uh, Portugal, in the future. Back from an awesome trip in Patagonia, it really was so special. We had such a good time, and we'll get to that. I think there'll be three or four, maybe, videos from Patagonia. 
it was just awesome. But as I mentioned, we'll get to that. For now, I kind of want to talk about this lens, the lens I started talking about in today's video. This is the Canon RF 16mm f2.8 STM lens. It's a bit of a mouthful. But the lens isn't because it's very small and that's inappropriate. I loved using this as my vlogging camera. But I think for the most part it will just stay as my vlogging camera. Or I guess my vlogging lens. I think it'll end up being my vlogging lens but also like part-time astrophotography, part-time street photography. I love it potentially for street photography. It's small, nondescript, doesn't like feel very in people's faces. Uh, I love kind of the feel of the lens. As we'll talk about, it's really sharp in the center of the frame, but kind of like cinematically soft to the corners. And then of course for Astro, how nice is it to be able to go like hike out to a, a night photography location with just that in your bag? Absolutely great. And then for video, it's super fast. It's really quiet as an STM lens to focus and it looks beautiful. I think the footage looks really, really nice. I don't think I had too many focusing issues at all. So um, yeah, absolutely awesome. I'm gonna quickly just show you a couple images. I didn't take a lot of photos on the trip with this lens, but you'll see lots of video in future vlogs. This was crossing the Andes um, from when I was flying from Brazil to Santiago. This, if you've ever done the flight from Buenos Aires or Sao Paulo to Santiago, it's epic. The flight when you get over the Andes is epic. It's also a little bit scary because they make you put your seatbelt on. <laughs> anyway, so like, yeah, really, really awesome. Uh, as you can see, it's sharp. Yes, it's grainy and a little bit noisy, but that was F7.1 ISO 3200. And yeah, super sharp. So those images I shot on the pier, full disclosure, they're not nice images. I was just taking images to test the sharpness. This one I shot f2.8, just again to show you that sharpness. It, it was also really windy, so maybe not the greatest example. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely sharp in the center of the frame. All the images I took with this camera throughout the trip were sharp in the center of the frame. But when you get to the corners, you can see this. This is the bottom of the frame. It's still sharp. And then it gets a little bit out of focus at the bottom. But if you go to the bottom corners, look at how out of focus that is. It's really, really soft on the far corners at f2.8. I mean, even look at this water, how soft that is. It's just almost blurry to the corners. You can also see some chromatic aberration in that water there. I found chromatic aberration in a couple places, but nothing too serious, nothing that Lightroom can't knock out. Uh, later, I switched to f16, uh, again, just to kind of show you the sharpness and stuff like that. This is where I focused, is right smack dab here, and it's super sharp, even in the wind. Uh, everything looks great there. Go down to the bottom, whoops, go down to the bottom, wow, why can't I handle the trackpad? Down to the bottom, and it's sharp all the way to the very edge. And then just before the edge, it goes a little unsharp. And then in the corners again, you lose a lot of sharpness. It gets really soft into that corner. Sharp to a, just outside that corner, but right in the corner, it's really soft. And the same with that corner as well. So I'm not concerned about that softness. I'm not using this lens as a landscape photography lens. I'm using it you know, as a handheld, hey, that's a cool thing to, I wanna photograph lens. So I'm not bothered about that lack of sharpness. In fact, I think it almost creates like a, like a soft vignette when vlogging and it looks really nice uh, on video. Uh, I only shot Astro one night. And so I think I only have one image with this lens. Where are you? Over here, okay, there's two images, but let's show you this one. I shot this at ISO 1600 f2.8, 30 seconds. We zoom in on the mountains. You can see there's some trailing stars because it was, uh, it's a little bit too long of an exposure at 30 seconds, should have probably been about 20. But the mountains are sharp, everything looks sharp, and I'm extremely pleased with that. Overall, like I said, I'm super pleased with this lens. It's gonna be my go-to vlogging lens. 
I will also hopefully put it through its paces for street photography at some point. Maybe do a trip up to Lisbon or Porto and do that? That sounds like fun, right? Anyways, we'll get to these Patagonia videos really soon. And uh, I think the next one's coming from here, Torres del Paine National Park. So I hope to see you guys there. Peace.